CTV W5 tonight. I'm the most happy-go-lucky kid I have ever met. A promising young student. Full speed ahead. She was always smiling. Terrific girl. A reputable boarding school with very relaxed rules. It was a big party house. And a night that would haunt so many for the rest of their lives. There's this emptiness. What could have happened to this teenager? Complete mystery. And why didn't her college or even police bother to find out? People that could have done something were doing nothing. Tonight. Did no one take attendance check? No. Woven together. Sandy Ronaldo. They never picked up the phone to call either of you. <laughs> With how authorities refused to help. The reputation of the college might be at stake. And why two brothers were forced to try to solve the mystery of their missing sister all on their own. Dying that way must have just been awful. This is CTV's W5. Here is Sandy Ronaldo. Good evening and welcome to W5. Tonight, a mystery and a quest. The mystery, what happened to a young college girl 26 years ago? Teresa Allure died under suspicious circumstances in the eastern townships of Quebec, south of Montreal. The quest, her family's search for the truth about what really happened to Teresa and for justice. Now in rural Quebec in the late 1970s, when Teresa was found dead, no one wanted to believe that it was anything but a terrible accident, quickly hushed up and forgotten. But as her two younger brothers grew into men, they were haunted by their sister's tragic death and began to believe that the college and police had failed Teresa and their family. They began investigating their very own, very personal cold case, making discoveries that would rock the eastern townships while trying to find out who killed Teresa. Easter weekend, 1979. The body of 19-year-old student Teresa Allure washes up in the river under this bridge near Sherbrooke, Quebec. How could the life of a well-loved, promising young woman come to such a terrible end? Teresa had come from a happy home, growing up in the 60s in the suburbs of Montreal. She was the oldest, the adored big sister to Andre, just one year younger, and the baby, John. The kids were all active and athletic, but Teresa's parents, Bob and Marilyn Allure, remember their first child as a real firecracker, an adventurous girl. The first word that would come to mind would be exciting. Teresa was very exciting in many ways. She, uh, wanted to participate in everything going on, you know. She was, uh, didn't want to miss anything in life. Full speed ahead sort of thing, you know. But for 26 years, her family has had to live with a mystery. How did she die? The story begins in the fall of 1978 in the rolling hills and lake country of Quebec's eastern townships in Sherbrooke, just an hour and a half south of Montreal. Teresa was 19, Andre 18. Both were enrolled at a boarding school called Champlain College, located in the village of Lennoxville, on the southern border of Sherbrooke. The Allure family had just moved to New Brunswick, and the two older kids wanted to stay behind and finish school. I had gone into the register's office, and I met a young woman there at the desk. I had talked to her. I remember her saying to me that she thought Teresa was a really terrific girl. Teresa's classmate, 17-year-old Suzanne de Rome, felt the same way. You met Teresa there in September when you both started school. What was she like? I just remember her as having a bubbly personality. She had a twinkle in her eye. She was always smiling, and she struck me as being the most happy-go-lucky kid I have ever met. Suzanne and Teresa were among several hundred students living at this residence off campus, a stately former girls' school. I can remember the day that my mother left me at school for the first time and it seemed that we were going to be very well supervised and then when she left it, d it was a big party house. We got to do what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it and nobody was there to monitor anything we did. There was little adult supervision inside this old Victorian building. 
It was 14 kilometers away from campus in a tiny, isolated village called Compton. The students were expected to take buses back and forth to class every day, but there was no one keeping track. The teenagers were essentially on their own. So the buses would pull up here and drop everybody off. There was one bus that carried... Teresa's brother Andre remembers the residents as pure freedom for a bunch of 16, 17 and 18 year olds, most of them away from home for the first time. Would it be fair to say it was a pretty party-like, wild environment here? Oh, it definitely was. But the party came to an abrupt end on the night of November the 3rd, 1978, barely two months into the term. Teresa Allure was in the Dewhurst Dining Hall on campus in Lennoxville around supper time. She told friends she was going to the library because she had a book report due on Monday. Then she missed the bus back to Compton. If you miss the 6.15 bus, the next available bus was at 11 o'clock. That's right. What if you wanted to go back to the residence in between those hours? What did you do? You hitchhiked, because otherwise it was a very expensive cab ride. Incredibly, the school thought it was acceptable for teenage students to hitchhike between the school and the residence. I gather in the handbook they also gave you tips on how oh, to yeah. hitchhike. What the did they tell you? Oh, to not to hitchhike alone. We were always told that we had to hitchhike in pairs. Um, uh, suggested not to hitchhike in the dark, um, to be weary of whose car we got into. With no bus for another five hours, did Teresa take the short walk over the bridge from the campus to Highway 147, which runs right through Lennoxville, south to Compton? Did she decide to hitch a ride? Only one friend was certain she saw Teresa here on the main staircase back in Compton later that night. Others say she never showed up. But that Friday was the last time anyone at school saw Teresa Allure alive. The weekend passed with students coming and going. No one noticed Teresa was missing. Monday came, mm -hmm. classes started, she didn't show up. Yep. Tuesday, she didn't show up for classes. Wednesday, she didn't show up. W did no one take attendance check? No. No? No. In the classes, the teachers did not check off the list of students who were in class? Never. We're you talking about 16 to 19 year old kids. These are not university students. That's correct. No, you, you could register for Champlain, arrive the first day of school and not attend one class Six days after Teresa was last seen, Andre went to the college administrator and asked the school to organize a search party, only to be dismissed. He just told me no, that he wasn't going to uh, turn the, uh, the school upside down for, for this particular thing. He wasn't going to turn the school upside down for a missing student. And that was the beginning of a series of wrong turns, missed opportunities to do something that might have changed everything. At any point, did anyone from the school call to indicate that Teresa no. had been missing? No, no one, <clears throat> not even to this day have we heard from the school. They never picked up the phone to call either of you? No. Not at any time. No. By all accounts, Teresa Allure was a happy, well-adjusted teenager, a good student with above-average marks. Yet, when her frantic parents rushed back to Quebec and Champlain College, they were stunned by the attitude of the school administration, who tried to deflect their questions. They're irrational. And what did they tell you about Teresa? What did they say to you? Mom, at my they husband. started with character assassination and putting us on the defense. And they started with things like... Uh, um, was Teresa our child or was she adopted? Champlain officials suggested there might be something wrong with Teresa. They hinted at a wild, irresponsible girl who could have run away because she was pregnant or even suicidal. And this triggered me into going around knocking on doors of priest houses and, uh, and convents uh, in the eastern townships. I spent uh, days in Maryland with me with her picture, looking to see if anyone had seen her. 